Another child shot in Detroit. Three other kids were in the house. As for the adults? Allegedly, uh, all were sleeping at 12 noon uh, at, on a Tuesday. The latest on the eight-year-old victim and the investigation. A major legal blow for the parents of the Oxford school shooter. The decision from the state Supreme Court and whether the couple will head to trial for involuntary manslaughter. Well, it's been a really warm and humid day here across the state. We have one more hot day before we start to see more of a fall-like pattern. We'll time out when the rain arrives and when those cooler temperatures arrive as well in the forecast coming up. Well, breaking news in Southgate, where a major fire is roaring at a senior apartment complex. Let's get right to Fox News. Camille and Mary, she's arriving on the scene just a few moments ago, so obviously she's going to have limited information, but at least you can describe the scene and tell us if you know if anyone was hurt. Yeah, uh, we are on Allen Road uh, in Southgate. This is the Meadows of Southgate apartment complex uh, burning out of control right now. We're going to take a chopper right now, live pictures. You can see firefighters from all over the area working to get this out of control. Now, we know we found out about this fire around 3.30, but we don't know if it happened earlier than that. This is a senior apartment complex. We have talked to some people who got out safely who said that firefighters were literally running. Police were running door to door telling everyone to get out as soon as they could not grabbing anything but their phone and their keys there are a lot of people across the street who are very very traumatized still watching their homes burn down knowing that they don't have anything they said one woman too distraught to talk on camera asked me where are we gonna go we don't have anything left now what caused this fire of course it is still way too early to determine what caused this fire I can't tell you that there are fire trucks, police, ambulances from all over the Downriver area working to get people safely to the hospital and to get them out of the building. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't tell you the last time I saw a fire burn this much out of control. Still minutes, even an hour afterwards. Right now, though, it looks like they have gotten the flames tampered down. But you can see if uh, we can go live to, uh, you know, back us. And I think that the chopper's probably been up there showing you, too, the firefighters up on these lifts trying to get the flames down from the water up above. Um, right now, I am not hearing about any serious injuries, but it is still so early right now in this investigation. I do know I've talked to people who said that people got out without their pets. We don't know if there are still animals inside there. Um, just so much going on right now. A lot of bystanders. And again, I just arrived about 20 minutes ago. We've had a, a photographer here earlier who was getting ground video, but I arrived about 20 minutes ago. So I've just been working to try to get information about, but it's it's all of the units affected. This is this area, this apartment complex is not going to be livable after this fire. So a lot to unpack here. Of course, we're going to stay on top of the story and bring you more information as soon as we get it. Live in Southgate, Camille and Mary, Fox 2 News. Yeah, Camille, as you say, just absolutely devastating to watch this unfold because, you know, many of these seniors, this is uh, kind of their, the, the place that they, they brought all their belongings to out of their homes and other places, uh, and then this is where they have their valuables, and the only thing they have to hold on to, they're sitting right there with. But I did want to talk to you about the fact that this is an independent, affordable senior living home, uh, which makes that hopefully a little bit easier if people are more independent to be able to get out on their own, and you don't have people who are, you know, stuck in wheelchairs and other issues like that. Right, right. And, you know, this is uh, an apartment complex. It's not assisted living. It's not a nursing home. So it's just a, an apartment complex where you have to be at least 55 years old to live here. Um, of course, there are people. We did see some people uh, in wheelchairs being put into uh, very, like, into smart buses. So they weren't ambulances, but they were small, smart buses. Uh, so I think maybe they were being evacuated. The smoke is bad here. It was affecting uh, one of my photographers a lot. Uh, but getting people you know out of here out of this area and like I said we have seen people in wheelchairs but again I want to stress it's not assisted living it's not a nursing home uh, so that at least is is a good thing but I mean literally there are people here watching this thankful that they got out alive but literally in tears and too traumatized to talk on camera but talking to me right before we went live saying I've lost everything everything I had was inside there and they they're asking where am I gonna go um, it's just it's really it's really sad. 
Um, thankfully, they got out okay, but um, it's still just a very sad situation. Yeah, you can't replace a life. You hope each and every person got out of there safely. I know you're staying on top of this for us. We'll be checking back in with you throughout the next couple hours with an update on this story. Camille and Mary for us live tonight. Thank you. Also breaking tonight, a historic moment in Congress. Moments ago, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to remove Speaker Kevin McCarthy. It's the first time in U.S. history the House has voted to remove a speaker. A handful of hardline Republicans led the effort, and with Democrats also voting to remove McCarthy, the measure passed. The House will now be tasked with electing its next speaker, which could be a long process. You may recall back in January, it took 15 rounds of voting for the House to improve. McCarthy as speaker. Also tonight, a young boy is shot in the head by an unsecured gun inside a home in Detroit. And police are trying to figure out why the adult in the house waited 30 minutes after the child was shot before calling 911. Fox 2's Dave Spencer joining us live now from the scene. And Dave, any word on the child's condition? Yeah, the latest there from the chief is that he was taken to the hospital in extremely critical condition. And at last check, we heard that he is still in surgery some five hours after the alleged shooting took place. And behind me, the crime scene is still active five hours after they were initially called. They're trying to determine how this eight year old was shot, who pulled the trigger and why somebody waited so long, nearly 30 minutes to call 911 in the first place. A house turned crime scene on Snowden near Schaefer and Fankel on the west side of Detroit. There was an unsecured firearm allegedly uh, left where a child could get it. A child did in fact get it uh, and was either shot himself or another child got a hold of the gun and shot him is what we're being told. An eight year old taken to surgery after being shot in the head. Three other kids all under the age of eight in the house as well. As for the adults. Allegedly, uh, all were sleeping at 12 noon uh, at, on a Tuesday, um, but we're looking into that right now. Uh, none of that really makes sense. Neighbors are familiar with the people living there, anywhere from eight to 10 people at any given time. They were some um, people that had needed, you know, mental health. This home is known to police and Child Protective Services as well. Police say CPS was there just a few weeks ago, and one adult does have a criminal history, including gun charges. He carries a weapon illegally uh, and we know uh, that he frequently carries guns and we know that uh, he has multiple guns at this residence. I didn't even know they had weapons in that house though because of the way they yeah the way they be acting and stuff like that. This is real sad very sad. Another concerning detail in this case the time it took for anyone to call police or attempt to help the child. There's three cars two in the driveway one in front of the house all uh, seem to come back to that home so we're very concerned why no adult took the child to the hospital. We're very concerned why it took 30 minutes. While all adults have been accounted for, the weapon has not been found yet. And we're going to submit this case to the prosecutor's office, and we're going to be looking for charges uh, for the adults who, who allowed this poor kid to get the gun. Again, one of the reasons that police have been on here for so long is that they were waiting for a warrant to actually go into the house. That came at roughly about 345. That's when we saw officers first enter. And just a few minutes ago, we saw them bring a number of firearms. We don't know if any of them were involved in the actual shooting of an eight-year-old, but take them out, place them into evidence as this investigation continues. Reporting live in Detroit, Dave Spencer, Fox 2 News. Because at this point, Dave, it's not clear who may have fired that gun, and that might be what Correct. caused that delay. So it could have been one of the children inside of the home or perhaps one of the four adults. So police are going to have to start to get to the bottom of that very quickly. Yeah, they're going to make sure everybody's story checks out. And again, they have not uh, said that they have recovered the actual gun used in commission of the shooting of that eight year old. So they want to make sure that they have everything airtight before they hand this over to the prosecutor and they plan to charge each and every adult if they are able to do so. Such a shame. Another unsecured gun. Dave, thanks for that. Well, the Michigan State Supreme Court has denied an appeal request by the parents of the Oxford High School shooter who wanted the charges against them thrown out. James and Jennifer Crumbly filed the petition with the high court back in May, arguing they're not responsible for the shooting committed by their son. They're facing involuntary manslaughter charges. No trial date has been set. Now, we talked to the attorney for the victim's families who says this court's decision sends a message. What this does is remind us all you have a responsibility 
not just for your child, but for the child that your child and the children that your child hang out with and are exposed to every day. If there's something drastically going on with your child, you need to take care of it. And if you don't, you can be held accountable in the law. Last week, an Oakland County judge ruled the shooter is eligible for a sentence of life in prison without parole, despite being a juvenile. He'll learn his punishment on December 8th. On day 19 of the UAW strike, Senator Gary Peters heads to the GM Redistribution Center in Pontiac to walk the picket line. The senator encouraging others to stand in solidarity, claiming striking workers aren't just fighting for higher wages and better benefits, but for the future of the middle class. Analysts claim the strike has already amounted to billions of dollars in losses. Clearly, uh, the UAW workers that are, are here striking uh, have sacrificed in the past considerably. Companies are doing extremely well right now, and everybody should be treated fairly. I think it was a good look for to have the senator here to, to see what we do every day, see uh, what we're striking for and what, what our core values are. It's not the senator's first appearance on the picket line. He joined Ford workers in Wayne when the strike began. We see everybody out there uh, wearing short sleeves, everybody out and yeah. about, uh, some of them wearing shorts. It was summer-like weather today, and it's going strong. It's, what, the, the third day of October now. Yeah, the question is, well, last, Fox News meteorologist Stephanie Mean has the answer for us. Stephanie? Yeah, for sure. I think we see one more very warm day here across the state. We were a little warm than, warmer, I should say, than what we were yesterday. We topped out at 81 yesterday. We still have time to maybe add a few more degrees to today's high. We're at 83 right now, the record at 89, so we're not going to break that but we're close considering that we're about say six degrees off from that right now otherwise the average should be in the upper 60s so we are well above that and we do have one more very warm day before we start to see more of an October feel here across the state 86 in Mount Pleasant 87 Traverse City 83 in Lansing uh, 82 degrees in Detroit we are dry and quiet for right now notice here how showers in our next system here a little closer to say the plain states they are bringing some stronger to severe thunderstorms there for us I don't don't think we're looking at that severe weather risk, although we could maybe squeeze out a thunderstorm or two. Those are just your garden variety showers through uh, the day, at least late tomorrow and through Thursday. 62 degrees for an overnight low tonight should be another mild one with a mostly clear sky. And then our temperatures tonight will fall through the 50 or I should say 70s and eventually 60s. We do see more 50s and rain out ahead of us. We'll have timing on that in the full forecast in about 10 minutes or so. Roop.